Hello everyone, good day, or should we say good morning because it's like one in the morning here in Vietnam. So in this video, I am going to share to you the seven things that I think we need to know, we need to learn in order to survive being an online ESL teacher. English as a second language. So ESL was only a concept before that I've been learning as a theory in college, but now I'm doing it. So I think, you know, the concept that I've learned before is really helping me right now. But when you are already on board as a teacher, as an ESL teacher, you got to um, learn a lot of things, and then we might as well, you know, share it to other people, because this video are for those people who are thinking um, if you would like to be an online ESL teacher or you know you are already on board as an ESL teacher so maybe you can also relate and you can also share your ideas if I'm doing it right so here I have my copy of things that I should say to all of you so I think that the first one is um, it got to be patience because the application process for online ESL teaching I think um, in a way it would be the same, the same struggle with, you know, with the actual application that you would do for a company, but it's a different kind of setup for, for ESL teaching. You have to be patient because some of the, some of the companies, they have a lot of process to do. Like in this company that I'm working on, it took me 20 days. And in the other company, it took me around, you know, one week after I was able to do all the things that they would like me to do. So there are a lot of processes. You have to submit documents, you have to, to make a text intro, you have to introduce yourself in a video, you have to submit certificates and all that. So I really think that number one, patience is really important if you would like to become an online ESL teacher. And second of all is what we call determination. Determination because we are not all lucky in our first time. Probably for those who apply for certain companies, they apply first and then immediately they got accepted, so good for them. But for other people who wasn't able to submit probably their documents on time or they weren't really good in their first try, so they failed. And that was also my experience with Paulfish because the first time I applied, I wasn't able to you know, submit the document and to do my demo on time, so I failed in my first application automatically because na late na. So determination, everyone, because um, we need to be determined, you know. Okay, third of all is we need to be strategic. Why is that? Because um, there are a lot of fishes in the sea. What I mean is that there are a lot of ESL companies and that your, your job is to look for the best ESL company that suits your qualification. You know, one of the things there would be the would be the pay rate for you, and also the kind of environment that you'll be in, the kind of students that you will be teaching. So, you have to choose. You have to know where you are going. All right. So be strategic in in that case. I would say I would call it like we need to be job smart. All right. And I think that would also include about working for one or more ESL companies. Because in my case right now, I was actually I was actually applying before for two online companies. And now I'm I'm working currently with two online companies. And it's actually the same setup here, being an actual ESL teacher here in Vietnam. And I think I'm gonna make uh, another video for that. Because here in Vietnam, I work for around four ESL companies during different time. Yes, and you just have to should manage your time for that. But, you know, we need to be strategic, we need to be job smart. Yes, laban na, for, for, for money. All right, um, that was number three, and number four will be hard work. Okay, hard work because ladies and gentlemen, you cannot pass, for example, the grammar test. You cannot pass the company policy test if there are, if you're not going to study. Good for some companies because um, the quiz would be very easy because there would be teachers who would be helping you for the key answers. But there is one company, and I'm talking this company, um, you really have to do it on your own, you really have to read, you really have to research, 
you really have to study, you really have to watch a lot of videos on YouTube, any available videos on YouTube, just for you to, to learn, all right? And when I say hard work and when I say research, that also means you also have to ask fellow teachers who are already in the program, who are already in that organization or company. And yeah, you really have to humble yourself, you really have to empty your cup and learn from other people. Otherwise, you would not really um, prosper. You would not really propel to, to the kind of you know, employee or person that you will become if you're not going to learn from other people. All right, hard work because during the, during the course of online teaching, there would be a lot of things to do, and not really a lot, but for example, after the class, you're going to write down a comment, and of course, you really have to personalize the comment that you have to give to the kid, or that you have to give to the, to the children. All right, that's number four. Number five is you have to be strong. You have to ready your heart, your emotional being, because ladies and gentlemen, we cannot please everyone. You know, there are some students who might not like you firsthand, so probably they may act like you know they don't like you during the class or they may they might you know spike you after the class by giving their rating to you so you really have to read your heart or for example you already got their bookings and then they already booked for your classes and then all of a sudden after the first class um, they they canceled all those classes because I have experienced that you just have to be strong you know emotionally because it's only one student maybe they, they don't like you but there's still a lot of students who might like you, so don't lose hope, all right? That's number five. And number six, I think this is you know one of the most important things that you should be uh, at the beginning of the application or during the process of being an online ESL teacher, and that is self-denial. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to set aside yourself because um, in online teaching, you will not be the kind of person that you are in front of your boyfriend or your girlfriend you would be a teacher and then probably you might act like a different person talking to a kid all the time so you know you really have to set aside yourself because why i'm saying this one because before i have been telling myself when i was in the university that there is no way that i'm gonna teach children but right now i am you know don't close your doors with these kinds of opportunities because you know during this coronavirus pandemic it's only this kind of job that we are earning money so set aside yourself humble yourself everyone that's number six and lastly oh this is already the last one lastly is balance your time do not overwork time management ladies and gentlemen this is really one thing that you need to you need to bear in your mind you can work in different companies but manage your time managing your time means managing time for yourself because no matter how hard how hard we work for these companies they can easily replace you if you're sick or you know you might die because it's true okay um, you really have to you really have to save something for yourself you really have to take care of yourself do not overwork I have experienced it here in Vietnam I've been working for many companies and I did not have time for myself I work all morning all afternoon all day including the evening and you know there was just one moment or one time that I had to give up those classes for one day or for two days because I was sick. I did not give enough time to myself. The money that you have been earning for those days will just be spent for your medications, will just be spent for, for the medicines that you have to buy. So yeah, balance your time. And this is one thing that I have really learned because uh, it can also improve your performance as a teacher. Day off is really needed you know at least one day day off in a week it could be saturday sunday or any days that you would want for example in my case only today because i've learned it in the past months or in the past years sunday it's sunday today i need to, to have a rest day today and i feel so overwhelmed of the kind of freedom that i have and tomorrow will be another day and so not tomorrow later today is another day and i have I have the drive to teach once again for another week. So once again, do not forget to have a day off. And actually this is seven plus one. Another thing that I have also learned and that you should also do is, ladies and gentlemen, creativity. Look at what I'm doing at the back. You know, if you're gonna look at my face, do I look like someone who knows how to, you know, put design something like that? It's not very good, but I'm very proud of myself that it's what we call creativity. Like using using the, the available things that you have here 
and good thing I have a printer that I could you know print some materials for for my class. All right. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna share to you how how I also you know it's actually the same. I work now for two companies, and then the same kind of design. I just changed the, the logo at the back. So let me show you. It's not a print for now. And when I teach for another ESL company, I just have to put Palfish. So as easy as that. Laban ng tayo. So those are the seven things, guys. Seven things that um, you need to know in order to survive online teaching. If you know other tips, you might want to comment down below. So for those who have not liked or subscribed this channel, please do like my channel. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.